and I am um, a proud board member of the Brantford Historical Society. And uh, we welcome you here today to this bicentennial celebration of Lafayette's visit to Brantford. Thank you all for coming today. The mission of the Brantford Historical Society is to discover and preserve the history of Brantford um, by the acquisition and the preservation of artifacts, documents, and records of Brantford's providence and to actively promote Brantford's history to the community. And uh, that's why we all invited you here today to celebrate this. I just want to uh, thank you to our members. Without you, um, there would be no Brantford Historical Society Harrison House Museum. Uh, and um, we thank you for your support, for your financial support, and for coming out for our programs and for coming here today. I also would like to thank our own heroes today, which is our board of directors and our volunteers that keep our, our museum going, um, and our um, wonderful town historian for the, for the town of Brantford, which is Jane Booley. thank yous. I would just like to make note of uh, this event uh, would not be possible without uh, the contributions of Foxfield Farm. Um, and um, thank you to BCTV for coming. And thank you to the Pomeroy Foundation who um, provided us with this, this um, Lafayette trail marker that you will see when we unveil in, in just a short time. Um, I would just like to um, encourage you all to become members if you haven't already. Uh, we will um, keep you updated with our activities and our events and just keep you in the loop. So I am going to just jump right now to a very um, nice letter that we received uh, from the Pomeroy Foundation and from um, on behalf of the Lafayette Trail Marker uh, dedication ceremony. Okay. Congratulations from all of us at the William G. Pomeroy Foundation on the dedication of your Lafayette Trail historical marker. We send our warm regards and greetings from Syracuse, New York as you commemorate the legacy of Revolutionary War hero General Lafayette and his visit to Brantford. We wish we could be with you for this special occasion as part of the Lafayette Tour Bicentennial. At the Pomeroy Foundation, one of our main initiatives is to help people celebrate their community's history. We do this by offering grants for historical markers and plaques nationwide as well as several other history-related initiatives, such as our National Education Program, which provides free lesson plans and guidance to teachers who work with the students on research to obtain a fully funded historical marker. We feel strongly at the Pomeroy Foundation that markers help educate the public, encourage pride of place, and promote historic tourism. How did our mission come about? I have been passionate about history since my childhood. I have fond memories of riding in the car with my father, who was a traveling salesman, and seeing historical markers we would stop and read together. In 2005, I established the foundation and made funding markers a priority among our first initiatives. I had learned that New York State had stopped funding its marker program decades ago and had left it to communities to raise funds on their own. This was the impetus for our first marker grant program and later became the springboard for several more programs, including funding markers on the Lafayette Trail here today. The bicentennial of the farewell tour is underway and we have committed to funding up to 175 markers now including one specifically recognizing the general service in the American Revolution in multiple states in Washington, D.C. As we celebrate Lafayette's visit to Connecticut, we are reminded that the history of the farewell tour touches countless sites across the country. 
We commend your efforts to bring greater attention to Lafayette's impact on American history and the enduring friendship between France and the United States. Thank you to the Lafayette Trail founder and president, Julian Pitcher, the Branford Historical Society, the Harrison House Museum and Barn, the Branford community, and all of those who were involved in this marker project. We know this marker will ensure the general's contributions to our nation's founding and will stand as an enduring testament for future generations. From all the dedicated staff and trustees of the Pomeroy Foundation, congratulations. Sincerely, Bill Pomeroy, founder and trustee of the G. Pomeroy Foundation. So we told them that we would read that, and we just want to thank them for their efforts. So uh, I am going to now kick the program over to uh, Jane Booley, who will tell us all about the history of this. Well, thank you. This is great. For, thank you for coming. As you know, we're celebrating here today the 200th anniversary of Lafayette's tour to the United States. Uh, and, but more specifically, I want to talk a little bit about Brantford as I make a few of my comments. Yesterday, East Haven had their unveiling of their marker, and it's the second time that Lafayette visit, visited East Haven, and I'll mention that before uh, again. Uh, Lafayette was an ardent believer in the democratic ideals as a teenager in what was happening in the United States and our fight for freedom. He was an aristocrat, very wealthy, and had military training in sort of like our equivalent of the foot guard here in Connecticut. And when the war started here in the United States against the wishes of his family at the age of 17, he built his own boat, financed his own crew, and came to the United States to fight for us. Uh, at first he was made a ma major general, which was sort of honorary, not really holding any teeth. And they were very skeptical of him. He was like 19 years old at this time. But he proved himself in battle and proved himself with his military expertise. And he eventually became obviously one of our heroes of the Revolutionary War and like a son to George Washington. It was uh, halfway through the war, he went back to France, and he was a prime mover in negotiating France, becoming our first ally and f helping to finance the, this war, the war that we gained our independence. Without France, and certainly without Marquis de Lafayette, we would not have gained that independence. Uh, when he went back to France, he had a son born, his first, whom he named George Washington Lafayette. Uh, he was revered by the people of this country for his heroism and his efforts on our behalf, and he was the most popular person in the late 1700s, early 1800s, second only to George Washington. Uh, after the war here, he went back to France, and most of you know what happened in France uh, at that time. There were tumultuous years. He fled to Austria and was in prison. Uh, his wife's family were all executed as aristocrats, uh, loyal to the king. But after the war, he was allowed, he came back to France, and he was one of the co-authors of the France Declaration of Independence and all other documents. Uh, I've been following the Lafayette Trail since it started. Julian Asher uh, was a teenager uh, when he came to this country with uh, President Macron to see our president to emphasize the historic contributions and friendship between France and the United States. And he explains that he was so blown away by how much Lafayette stuff we have and that we still talk about Lafayette. He says they don't even, people in France don't even like know who he is. We have dozens, if not hundreds, of towns, streets, schools, uh, parks, uh, people that were named for Lafayette in this country. And so he stayed and he founded this Lafayette Trail Foundation from the bottom up, fundraising and to uh, celebrate this 200 years. As he travels around the country, he's not here today because so much is going on in Connecticut. Uh, he does short videos, about 20 minutes, and those are on YouTube. They're entitled, Follow the Frenchman. And I encourage you to look at those. They're a lot of fun, but packed with a lot of history. So nearly 50 years after the start of the Revolutionary War, most of the officers had died because officers, of course, were older than the foot soldiers, uh, the exception being Lafayette. And most of the soldiers and sailors were now in their 60s or older. 
And so President James Monroe invited Lafayette as the last major general still surviving from the Revolutionary War to come do a tour of this country, his last farewell tour. And it was important to Monroe because there was a lot of political strife in the country at that time. Of course, they did not know in 30 years what would be happening. Uh, so Pollock's tips don't change, just the players. Uh, so Lafayette was still only 57 years old and his grand tour lasted over one year. So he spent it away from his country, away from his family. He landed in New York City on August 15th, 1824 and made his way down the East Shore, first to East Haven and then over here to Brantford, arriving here on April, August 21st. Now, um, everywhere he went, there were huge crowds. Before the internet people and all these social media things, they got the word out. Uh, there were newspapers, so there were huge crowds everywhere he went. Uh, banquets, parades, celebrations, liberty poles, dinners, uh, special events. And everyone that came, of course, were, was filled with patriotism and gratitude for Lafayette and what what he did. He, he especially liked to see the children and the field photos which he sought out when he came to each town. And he even visited grave yards, grave markers of deceased soldiers. Uh, so in one year, in two weeks, he came through Connecticut. He visited 24 towns and cities in Connecticut. And I've been thinking, uh, as I prepared these remarks, what was it like for one whole year he visited all 24 states in the Union, all down south, Mississippi, Louisiana, up the Mississippi, out to the Midwest, on stagecoach, carriage, canal boats, and steamboats. There were no paved roads. What was it like? It must have been grueling. All that food and all that ceremony. I, I'm like exhausted thinking about it, aren't you? Um, so, yeah, it's hard to rain, snow, uh, so on. So, to his credit, he did it. Uh, so, for Branford, there's three oral histories concerning Lafayette and Branford. Uh, the first one, and again, it's oral history, was that he came to Branford during his 1824 tour. Uh, we never could prove it. Secondly, when he came here, he sought out Daniel A. Wolf of Bradford, who was a soldier under Lafayette in Lafayette's division, and I'll speak about Abel in just a minute. And the third is what you read about, is that when Lafayette was here, he had a dinner, dinner in a tavern in Bradford and drank Flip, which was a punch made with alcohol, out of a glass that was called a Flip glass, and we have on display in our parlor that Flip glass. Again, the oral history, that is the glass that Lafayette drank out of. We can't prove it. Uh, so, the, you know, the problem with oral history is there's almost always a great... The significance of history. Understand the impact that those individuals, those events had, uh, uh, not only at that time, but what they continue to have on us today. And I think what the historical society and all those who uh, contribute and participate in, in educating uh, in the, 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 not only the schools and the children when they come here for field trips, but also extending it outside of these grounds here into our community, that brings it closer to home. That brings it closer. It's part of our community that we're part of this. And I think when you think of that, and it, just it's human nature. When things are closer to home and closer to you personally, they resonate with you more and it, they grasp and hold on to that impact and the understanding. You know, in, in, you know, when they got the invite for this and they looked at the presentation um, for Lafayette, one thing that struck out at me, just doing, you know, a little research and, you know, obviously Lafayette, as you said, the name is all over. There's buildings, parkways, bridges, parks uh, throughout this country named after Lafayette. <clears throat> but, you know, again, it's more to understand what was the impact of that. And you think about this, a young teenager coming over to the United States, or not, you know, at this time, coming over really to fight for democracy 
and for what the, the nation that we have. <clears throat> that in itself is awe-inspiring. But then I read, and when he came here for the tour, and that year was also the election of uh, when John Quincy Adams and Andrew Jackson, I think there was probably two or three other candidates running for president. No, no one obtained, and this isn't meant to be a political commentary, it's more just a commentary on the event and the impact and, and, and inspiration really that came out of it. That winter, <clears throat> with no candidate receiving the majority of the electoral votes, then it was the House of Representatives who had to decide. And the speaker came out and announced that would be Adams would be the president. They turned to each other, and, and I think it was inspiring and, and what it must have been incredible for Lafayette to be witnessing it because it was occurring while he was here. Andrew Jackson and John Quincy Adams shook hands when John Quincy Adams took presence. That must have been truly incredible, and especially when you think of Lafayette and what he's endured in his life and after returning back to France, what he and his family had endured. To see that and to be a part of establishing that was, I think, awe-inspiring for him, uh, and, and it should still be today for all of us. So once again, on behalf of the town, I thank the Historical Society for your, your carrying out the mission uh, and all the work that you do in our community. And at this time, it would be a great pleasure to introduce General Lafayette. Thank you all for coming. Thank you to the Grand Historical Society. We raise the toast to General Lafayette for 200 here. years of his trailhead. Here, here, here. here. So uh, we're here today at the Nathaniel Harrison House Museum and Barn, and this is a property that we've been operating for um, several decades. Uh, we bought the property in 2016 and have since been operating it as a museum, and um, we are our. Branford Historical Society operates it, and our goal is to preserve and, um, you know, sort of educate the, the public on uh, the history of Branford. We also do a lot of outreach programs, and uh, we have been growing our outreach, and so this is one of the events that we've done this year, uh, Lafayette uh, Bicentennial, and welcoming um, we so we've been growing our education program and this is one aspect of it we've been receiving some grants to extend our reach a little bit and uh, we're excited that this event was such a, a popular event we had so many members and community um, folks that came out and neighbors that were able to not only uh, take a, a great tour of our uh, museum, but also to enjoy um, the historical aspect of the, of the event. The Branford Historical Society is most well known for our uh, strawberry shortcakes at the 
Branford Festival every year, and that is our large fundraiser for the year. Other than that, we do partnerships with the Blackstone Library, and we have done uh, several programs. Um, every couple of months, we do a, a great program, bring in a specialist. Um, we had um, a museum, uh, an African-American museum um, from uh, Stratford come and bring some um, items from their museum, their collection, and enjoyed uh, that for the community. So we are open every Saturday um, during the uh, June through September time period. Uh, our house is not heated really to speak of, so we do tours every um, every Saturday afternoon from 1 o'clock to 4 o'clock. And if you want to come uh, bring a tour through, bring a family through, we often uh, get visits from people that um, have a history in town and want to learn more about their families and their backgrounds. Yeah, we always welcome volunteers to the Historical Society. We actually just had a big, big uh, fundraising campaign. We replaced the roof on the Harrison House. It was time to get a, a new roof to protect our collection. So we um, had a big fundraiser and some uh, other activities. If you want to be involved, we need tour guides all the time. We need folks to work on our garden um, alongside our Branford Garden Club and board members, if you're interested in being a board member, that's also a great way to be involved. When President James Monroe invited uh, Marquis de Lafayette to come to the United States for a final grand tour in 1824, he accepted the invitation. And uh, it was a way for him to see his old soldiers and to see the people who revered him in this country that he was part of to gain our independence. So he landed in New York City on August 15th, 1824, and six days later on August 21st, he f first stopped in East Haven and then came here to Branford. And we only just proved a couple months ago that he did come in Br Branford, even though that was our oral history. And it was proven not via uh, Lafayette's secretary's journal or the New Haven newspapers, but a Westchester County newspaper. So we proved that he did indeed come here. Uh, probably many uh, big crowds, everyone in this country adored him. And the oral tradition is that he sought out Daniel Averill, who was a soldier that fought in his division throughout the war as a starting as a teenager, and probably also went to Center Cemetery where some of the soldiers were buried. And then he had dinner at the Towner Tavern, or also called the halfway house being halfway between New York City and Boston. And there had dinner, it was on the po what was called the Post Road, now East Main Street, ac across from the current St. Agnes Cemetery. And the tradition is that he had dinner there and shared a beverage, which was called a flip, uh, in a vessel which was called a fit flip glass. And the Branford Historical Society has that flip glass on display. It's quite beautiful, donated by the Towner family. And we also have on display uh, Daniel Averill's wooden fife. He was a fifer as a 17-year-old under Lafayette in the Revolutionary War. And just a third Revolutionary War uh, artifact that we have, they're very hard to come by, is the can wooden canteen of Samuel Baldwin of Branford, where he carved his initials S period, B period, and then underneath carved the words, pray, send me home. <laughs>